Estate planning is a vital tool for women to secure their future and legacy. It's not just for the wealthy, but for everyone who wants to ensure their wishes are respected. A comprehensive estate plan typically includes a last will and testament, trusts, power of attorney, healthcare directives, beneficiary designations, along with a detailed schedule of assets. These components work together to manage and distribute assets effectively, both during and after life while also providing crucial guidance for healthcare decisions and personal responsibilities in case of incapacitation. The most common oversight is the absence of an estate plan, leaving significant decisions in the hands of others. Estate planning is about safeguarding your interests, family, and assets. Life changes such as marriage, divorce, or a spouse's death necessitate revisions to the estate plan. Regular reviews, especially after age 60, are crucial to ensure that the plan adapts to current circumstances and legal developments. Regular updates keep the plan effective, reflecting the ongoing changes in life. Judith, you're writing a book for women right now. You also do a lot of coaching and training in transformative leadership for women. What lessons can you draw that can help women to address financial, uh, to address estate planning and legacy? And I think that's a very good question. It's actually a very good one for me right now because my husband and I have gone through some different shifts and we're re-engaged in a whole nother level of our estate planning right now, looking at all of it, just like you're talking about. So I'm kind of in the process again myself right now. And I, part of it, part of what I look at, part of how I support people with it is what I'm experiencing. It's stirring to do estate planning, you know, to think about your death, what will happen. I mean, there's emotional components to it that you can't ignore. It's not just a financial thing or whatever. It's very stirring to really be able to deal with those feelings or to think about your dying or your spouse dying or what happens or your relationship with people and where do you want your legacy and what is your legacy. These are big, big issues. And that's oftentimes why people don't deal with them, but they really need to be dealt with. So what I look at is really uh, someone really understanding themselves more fully um, and looking at these values that actually Stephanie talked about before, but also Mariko, just what you talked about being, you know, being able to do things differently, look at what it is really that you value. What, what do you want? What do you want to have, say at the end of your life, for example, what do you want that legacy to be? So even as I'm working with someone in their leadership development or with executive coaching or working with women or women executives, whatever, I'm always looking at, you know, who are you? What matters to you? What is the end game that you're going toward? And how can you use your finances? How can you use your business to really help you become the person you want to become? So it's synthesized. It's not like separate. My money's separate. My job's separate. It's all part of your own transformation, really looking at your own becoming so that every business move you make, every investment move that you make, it plays into that bigger theme of who you are, who you're becoming, what matters to you. And that tends to bring a lot more integrity to people and they feel more um, uh, whole, more, more integral, more whole in that way. So that's part of what I look at as part of your own identity and work with the emotions, but also look at the vision of who you are and who you're becoming and how do your investments and how does this development, how does that all play together and how does that how does that play out? I mean, you're even doing deathbed visualizations with people, like how do you want that to be at the end of your life? What is it that matters? And then letting your decisions guide toward those kinds of values. It's not easy to think about that. Something like a global pandemic forced a lot of yes. people, including me, to really say, okay, uh, death is possible. I better get on it and make sure that our will and everything is set up. Stephanie, why do you believe that estate planning is a critical aspect of financial empowerment for women? I do think that we tend to think of estate planning as something that we will deal with at the end of our working years or the end of our working life. And I think for women especially who do tend to be 
primary caretakers within households are very concerned about the security of their family long term. This is a process that needs to begin mm -hmm. as soon as you start to earn your own mm -hmm. money. So this could be in your 20s and 30s. You know, I'm midlife. I just had my first child. You know, I'll be 40 shortly. And so, like, you don't think of that as the time to plan my will. But it actually, you know, I, I probably should have started before this moment because it's not just about the decisions that I'm going to make, not just because as a woman I'm going to live longer, but it's also about, uh, you know, it's not all future based. It's also about what I'm doing now. A lot of the times we talk about women taking time out of the workforce to care for their children, and that's a really important uh, that's important work, but it isn't compensated. And oftentimes we oversimplify the long-term implications. We say, oh, well, I'm not making as much money as childcare costs, so it's not worth it for me to continue working for these years. But it's not just about that immediate cost. It's about this long-term cost. It's about the employer retirement contributions that are also made during those years if you remain in the workforce. It's about the time you spend in your career and remain attached to the labor force and the growth potential of those years. And again, this is not to say that staying engaged in the labor force is critical for everyone for the entirety of their working years. But I think sometimes we oversimplify to the immediate moment we're in and we lose perspective of the long term future. So I think estate planning has to be top of mind, even for people who are, you know, right in the thick of their careers. Well said. Mariko, any specific elements that people should be focusing on in regard to estate planning? Um, I think it really depends on where you are in, and in, because in, in, th this is the other thing, right? The, the planning is going to shift over time uh, and your goals and your life. So it's, it's an iterative process. So if, um, but I always feel that it's just sort of good, hygiene that you should have a will, right? You should have a healthcare proxy. Uh, you should you know, let people know whether you want the plug pulled or not. Um, if there are any charities that you care about, um, that that is just when, because if you're in the practice of, if you have a will at 25, right? It's just not, you don't get that superstition at 55 going, oh, now I'm going to have a will. Oh no, now I'm, now I'm going to somehow invoke an early death. Right? And there's so many people who, who were successful business people, but somehow like just the idea of dying was just too much for them. And so they didn't do the estate planning to like take care of taxes. And then they end up messing up their heirs. Or I had a friend who in his early forties, you know, he, he had, had, just you know had had a child that was less than you know a year old got you know got married had a late in life he was an attorney and he died very suddenly he hadn't updated his will and he had left um his estate to his nieces and nephews because at the time you know he was single well they're minors right so for them they can't waive benefit so it was a mess um so part of it is just I just feel it's just good hygiene, even if you don't need something complicated. If you do it, then it, you're in the habit of doing it. And if every five years you're kind of re-looking to see where are you in terms of your net worth, in terms of your income possibility, you know, as time shifts, the things that you worry about and that you focus on shift. Um, and so I don't, uh, this is a long way of my saying, I don't have one answer for you. <laughs> Because it depends on where you are. I, I think that the thing is, I, I would just say start with always have a will, uh, you know, a durable power of attorney, uh, uh, health care instructions, um, and, uh, you know, at, at, at a minimum. And, and just start that as just out of the gate. You should just have that the same way you should, you know, file your taxes every year. You know? um, and then that makes it easier. And, and if every few years, every five years or so, every time you have a big life change, you, you actually sit down with someone. And this is a thing, I think, people sort of hate to spend money on, on, on sitting down with someone. And you don't need to have a thousand and one Monte Carlo simulations about whether you're going to have enough money or not. Just having a sounding board, you know, kind of like a financial checkup the way you would a physical checkup. Um, it just makes so much sense. You just, you know, so many people just don't have anybody to talk to about their money because 
they didn't grow up with it in their family or they just, you know, or the family's not going to be helpful <laughs> that way. And um, I, I just think it's important. You don't have to do this alone. And um, oftentimes you can find out that you're in far better shape than, than you thought that just actually knowing where you are um, lets you make better decisions in, in the future, particularly when you have a sense of where you want to go and why back to what Stephanie and Judith has said around it being connected to your values and your why. Um, so that would be the other thing I would really encourage everyone to do is every five years, you know, just just do that um, as well. Not to be self-serving, but I really do think it can make a big difference. <laughs> you know? Yes, and make sure to update your beneficiaries. Yes, um, yes. Your various accounts, because it's something that's easy to be forgotten. And I had, yes. I had a client who passed away two years ago and he hadn't updated his beneficiaries on one of his accounts because his beneficiary was his wife who died before him. And then his family has been trying to take care of his estate for some time and it's finally getting resolved now. So make yeah. sure to, that's an easy update for everybody. Yeah. I want to thank our panelists for joining us today and just some quick takeaways. We covered a lot over this, over the course of the hour. I think that, um, you know, we talked about the external, which is the societal, societal norms and the expectations. Um, but importantly, it's a lot of the inner work, um, examining what your values are and what's important to you. Um, because that's one way, if you, if you're focused on the inside, a lot of the time, it helps you to break through of the things that are happening outside of your control. And, um, you know, just to, to know what's important to you to, and to do your own thing. Um, I appreciate all the panelists sharing their insights and their expertise. You can find Dr. Judith Wright at liveright.com. That's W-R-I-G-H-T. Keep an eye out on or keep an eye out for her book. I don't know when that's gonna be released, but it, it, I'm sure it's gonna have a lot of value. Mariko Gordon, CFA, you can find her at maricogordon.com. And Stephanie O'Connell Rodriguez, you can find her and follow her at twoambitious.com. Kudos to Stephanie for joining us this evening with a three month old baby. I'm um, sorry for the interruptions. And of course, she's now sleeping. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we should go another hour. <laughs> well, we hope that the baby sleeps well. <laughs> thank, um, you. thank you again, Dr. Judith, Mariko, and Stephanie for joining us. Thank you, Inspired Moneymakers, for watching us and listening to us, whether it's on YouTube or on your favorite podcast player. Make sure to join us next week, Wednesday, March 13th. We'll be back at 6 p.m. with this is this is a little different topic. A taste of success. Andy's first wine investment. We're going to see how that goes from a guy who does not really drink wine. But until next week, do something that scares you because that's where the magic happens. Absolutely.